Good evening, church. Good evening, good evening. Hope and pray that you're having a wonderful, wonderful uh, Sunday. And how many of you got a nap today? Anybody get a nap today? Oh, good. A few people got it. Is that a half a nap? You got a half a nap. Okay. Mark got a half a nap. So, uh, and uh, let's remember Brother Rob Shibblehut. Uh, he is at the ER right now dealing with kidney stones. Am I saying that right? He's at the ER dealing with kidney stones right now, so let's pray for Brother Rob. Uh, just lift him up. And then uh, Rodney Robertson, is that right? Rodney Robertson is on his way to the Philippines doing mission work, so we want to pray for uh, his uh, cousin, his cousin that's on his way to the Philippines uh, to do mission work. So let's let's pray for them and lift them up, that God's hand will just be uh, upon them. And any other prayer requests tonight before anyone anyone at all? Yes. River. Okay. That's the little baby that had meningitis. Yes. Just remember the baby River that had meningitis. How's Peggy today? Okay. Amen. Amen. So let's remember that tomorrow is, uh, a, I told you the, the pastor that uh, was a mentor to me, uh, Brother Ronnie Howerton, his funeral is tomorrow in Monette, Missouri. He passed away, I believe it was Thursday that, that he passed, Thursday or Friday of this last week. Uh, anyway, just be in prayer for that. So we'll be in Monette tomorrow. Uh, also a friend of mine, uh, Brother Mark Wilhite, who has been to church here, uh, Mark's dad passed away. We have that funeral this week as well. Uh, and so we've got a couple of funerals to attend and just be in prayer about that. I saw a hand. I don't remember where. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. What's his name? Maddox. Let's remember Maddox battling uh, COVID. So let's let's pray. How old? Five? Five months? Five months. Wow. Okay. Let's remember that little one. All right. Well, let's stand and go to the Lord in prayer tonight. And hope y'all are ready to worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Worship him and, and lift him up. Father, Lord, we come to you tonight with all of these needs. We pray for Brother Rob right now. Lord, we know Brother Rob is, I believe he's at the ER dealing with these kidney stones. Father, we just pray that you would give him victory tonight over that situation. Uh, we pray for the little one, River, that is battling meningitis. We pray for this little one, Maddox, uh, Father, that is, that is fighting uh, for his life with COVID, Lord. We pray, Father, uh, Lord, for Peggy and just her recovery, and Lord, just all these that are still fighting and battling for their health and uh, what's going on and just what they're facing. Lord, we just pray that your hand would be upon them. Meet each and every need. Uh, Father, we, we pray for uh, Brother Bob and we pray for Brother Stan and just the different things that they're facing medically. Uh, Father, we pray that your hand would be upon both of them and strengthen them and lift them up. And uh, Father, we just pray that you'd be in our service tonight that you just minister to us, Lord, in spirit and in truth. And, Lord, we'll give you all the glory and honor and praise for you are worthy of it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said, amen. You ready to worship him tonight? Amen. Let's worship him.
beautiful name it is the name of jesus christ my king what a beautiful name it is nothing compares to this what a beautiful name it is You didn't want heaven without us So Jesus, you brought heaven down My sin was great, but your love was greater What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is what a wonderful name it is the name of jesus christ my king what a wonderful name it is nothing compares to this what a wonderful name it is the name of jesus Death could not hold you, the veil torn before you, you silenced the bows of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again, and you have no you have no equal now and forever God you reign and yours is the kingdom yours is the glory yours is the name above all names what a powerful name it is what a powerful name it is the name of jesus christ my king what a powerful name it is nothing can stand against what a powerful name it is the name of jesus and you have no rival you have no equal you silence the bones of sin and grave yours is the kingdom yours is the glory yours is the name above all names you have no have no equal now and forever God you reign yours is the kingdom yours is the glory yours is the name above all names what a powerful name it is what a powerful name powerful name it is nothing can stand against what a powerful name it is the name of jesus what a powerful name it is the name of jesus what a powerful name it is the name Come on, give the Lord another hand clap of praise tonight. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hold on, guys. You have no rival. You 
name amen thank you praise team as our ushers are coming tonight as we continue our worship through our giving amen hallelujah you know I I feel sorry for brother Rob tonight dealing with that kidney stone amen I know friends that have have dealt with it and the pain, but I think about what Christ went through, the pain he endured for you and I. You know, we've all had great pain in our life. We've had great physical pain. We've injured ourselves at some point. As a young man, I, I touched a smokestack on the side of a semi and burned my hand. That's a pain I'll never forget. Um, I've had emotional pain. I've had the pain of loss. I, I don't know that that loss we ever get beyond. It just becomes a new normal in our life. We still miss and love. And talked about my mom this morning, and I, I think about her every day miss her every day and uh, my dad and I tease we only miss her on the days that end with Y Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday I've thought a lot about Carol and I's goddaughter lately and just miss her and she'd be in college now and just what she would have become died way too young at the age of 15 can I tell you, he died on purpose so you and I could live. What a wonderful name. What a beautiful name. What a powerful name. May it never get old to you, church. May it never get old to you. Father, bless our tithe and our offering tonight. Use it for your glory, your honor, and your praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead, gentlemen. all feel that worshipful atmosphere isn't that a beautiful feeling isn't that wonderful one of those moments where you can just sit back and worship God for a little while I love it I, I love the shout I do I love when people run the aisles I, I love all the but that sweet spirit to me is my favorite I feel that sweet spirit in here tonight I, I don't ever want to get over that. And I, I know we we sometimes seek the greater, but that simple sweetness of God, you know, just sometimes we forget the simplicity of life. We need to remember it. Amen. Hasn't Talon done a good job for us today? Amen. <laughs> Sister Sherry didn't tell you, but she's not been feeling well. And, even had some throat issues. 
and uh, Jenna's not been feeling well. And so we believe in prayer. Carol, will you replace her at the piano real quick? We're going to, I'm going to get a couple of chairs and we're going to have both these young ladies just, Avery, come help me, son. We're going to pray over them. I, the Lord, just take these two chairs down front, all the way in front, on the main. Yep. Go. Well, there you go. Amen. Jenna and Sherry, come sit down. We're going to anoint them with oil tonight. We're going to pray over them. and They both have been badly. And uh, come on and have a seat, ladies. Those of you that can and will, let's gather around them tonight. Let's pray over them. God's mighty healing hand. We anoint them with oil tonight. The Bible says anointing them with oil in James chapter 5. Pray in the prayer of faith. It shall save the sick. That word save there is Rapha. It's to heal the sick. So let's pray.
you have your Bibles tonight, turn with me to the book of Romans. We're going to be in Romans real close. So if you get to Romans chapter 7 and verse 22, I'm going to focus on 23 is going to be our key, but I've, I've got to read the totality of thought here, uh, 22 through 24. Remember, when you start reading, I think Sister Deborah talked to you all about this in Sunday school the other day. Notice the punctuation. Get to a total thought. Not just one verse is going to give you. You've got to pay attention to that, church, as you study your Bible. 22 through 24 is just one complete thought there. And uh, God dealt with me last night. I told you I laid down to sleep. Well, let's read it, and then I'll, 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 start, I'll start teaching and preaching. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Now, verse 23 is really what God awoken me to and really started moving in me. But, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of of this death. Go back to verse 23. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind. Father, tonight I pray that you would touch us as we teach and preach. I pray that they would receive and I pray that they would walk away with a greater understanding how to win this war that every single one of us fight. Every single one of us fight this war. And Lord, I give you glory and I give you honor and I give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said, amen, amen. As we look at this tonight, the, what God really just spoke into me is that there is a war going on in our members. And when we read that word members, it's literally just talking about us, our bodies, our minds, our arms, our legs, just who we are in totality. And there is a war going on. Whether you realize it or not, you're at war every day. Every day you're at war. And you say, Pastor, I, I, I do realize that, but I think most days I win it. Well, praise God you win it. But then there are some days you don't win, and there are some weeks you don't win, and there are some months you don't win. But we've got to keep fighting the war. And as God began to talk to me about this laying in the bed last night, he said in, in just natural war, in war between humanity, do you know who wins the war? I said, well, I, I guess, Father, without trying to sound smart aleck in my own mind, the guy with the bis biggest guns always going to win the war. And that's what I said. And he said, you're absolutely right. The one with the most firepower. Now, I want you to hold on to what I'm getting ready to say. The one with the most firepower is going to win. So he said, it is so important what you are stockpiling. If you're stockpiling the things of this world, if you're stockpiling uh, the things of your emotions, the things of your mind, and, and here's what he said. That's why I encourage them tonight why it's important to listen to worship music. Now, when I say worship music, music that makes you worship. Because I know, Rick, your worship music is probably going to have a little banjo in it every now and then. No? Okay, well, good. Somebody's in here is because somebody's always going to pick on me about it. Somebody even stuck a banjo back here. There's a banjo behind this stage. And if it's yours, you better get it because it's going to be gone pretty quick. Anyway, Whatever your worship is, because here's what's going to happen. One day you're going to step into the war. One day you're going to step into the battle. One day you're going to step into the fight. What do you have stockpiled to fight with it? How much Bible have you been reading? How much worshiping have you been doing? He says, 
The reason we don't win the war is we don't have stockpiled what we need to fight the war. Would you all agree with me that Russia underestimated Ukraine? Russia thought they would go in there and just a few days Ukraine would be theirs. But there's a fighting spirit going on there and that war is still happening. Listen to me tonight. There is a war. We are not oblivious to this. We are not immune to this. This war is going to happen. Verse 22, he's talking about how much he loves the law of God. In fact, he says, I delight. That word delight there is I rejoice. I rejoice in the law of God. Now, if somebody is rejoicing in God's word, in God's principle, why in the world, in the very next scripture, would they say, but? Because it's a fact. We have a war. How many of you have ever, ever gone from a church service that you thought was awesome and wonderful and it was great and you left that church service and you're whistling and you're skipping and you get to the restaurant, at your favorite restaurant, and you sit down and five minutes goes by and ten minutes goes by and a half hour goes by and 40 minutes goes by and you still don't have your food. How was the attitude from the church service holding on? Come on, somebody. Oh, don't all look innocent. We've all been there. The enemy loves to attack. And so he says here, but I see another law in my members that is warring against the law of my mind. Now, here it is. Watch this. Bringing me into what? Captivity of the law of what? of sin which is in my members. Do you understand your flesh will always have the law of sin in it? Your flesh will always have the law of sin in it. If we are not putting things in our life that we need to fight this flesh, when that war comes up, it's going to be a struggle. Look at this scripture in the Amplified, verse 23 here. I love how the Amplified breaks this out. But I discern in my bodily members in the sensitive appetites and wills of, of the flesh a different law, a different rule of action at war against the law of my mind, my reason, and making me a prisoner. Look at that. Making me a prisoner to the law of sin that dwells in my bodily organs, in the sensitive appetites and wills of the flesh. Somebody ought to preach you can't have two wills. Can't have co-authority of wills. We'll, we'll, maybe one of these days we'll preach on that, amen? Can't have co-authority of wills because guess what? This fleshly will is strong. If you don't think your flesh is strong, start to fast. You'll crave things you haven't eaten, eaten in three years. Start to fast. Your flesh starts rising. Anytime you push your flesh down, anytime you deny your flesh, it's going to war back against you. I, I've, I've said this to you before, but years ago, and, and God convicted me, I quit watching it, but I used to love to watch the TV show Cheers. I love that TV show Cheers. I know it's in a bar. I know I'm a preacher. I get all that. But I used to love that. Norm would walk in. Everybody yelled, Norm. I don't know why I liked it. I just liked it. And God started dealing with me and said, listen, that's not a godly TV show. That's not a wonderful thing. You shouldn't be doing that. And you know, being spiritual like I am, I'm like, all right, God, I won't watch that. And you know how hard that was? The fight on the inside of me. To want to, because I, I knew when it came on, I knew what channel it came on, I knew what channels had its reruns. And that little thing, we think that that is so simple and we think that is so easy. But when we attach our emotions and our will and our flesh to something and then we deny that, it becomes so difficult to us. And we've got this war going on. He delights in the law of God, but then there's this war. Guys, win the battle. But if you're going to win the battle, you better have your war chest stockpiled. 
You better have enough ammo. You better have enough scripture. You better have enough vials of prayers that have been reserved in heaven so God can take that cork out and pour out those vials of prayer. Man, when everything's good, pray harder. Amen. It's easy to pray when everything's going bad. It's easy to pray when you're sick. It's easy to pray when you're broke. But when you're on that mountaintop and, man, your health is good and finances are good, man, don't forget to pray in those seasons of your life because you never know when you're going to have to reach back in and pull out some of those vials of prayers that you have prayed. There is a war coming. It's a fight coming after all of us tonight. And we've got to be ready to fight that good fight. We've got to be ready uh, to go after what God has in us and for us. Because the Bible says, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Go to that in the Amplified. Just click up to the next verse there and verse 24. I love how the Amplified puts this. O unhappy and impitable and wretched man that I am, who will release and deliver me from the shackles from the shackles of this body of death does anybody know what that's referencing have any of y'all studied that out let me tell you what that's referencing in Roman law if you murdered somebody and you were found guilty of murder they would take the dead body of the person you murdered and they would shackle that dead body to you and as that dead body would decay and the rot would happen, that rot would go off the corpse onto the living person. And it would create a sickness in that living person. And so they would die eventually because of that body of death. And so when Paul is saying here to a Roman people who understand Roman law, who's going to release the shackles of this body of death he's talking honestly hey i am guilty i am a wretched man there is a war but i do delight i do rejoice in god's principles and so this war that's going on i've got to be ready to fight it listen to me church there is a war coming we haven't seen the war yet we've seen little skirmishes Satan's getting stronger and stronger. I mean, we, we, we see all this mess in the news of children being raped and molested and being, being prostituted and these children who are becoming part of human trafficking. I mean, who can hurt a child? I mean, who in the world can hurt a child? But it's happening every day. And, and, and it, there is evil. And as this world gets darker, evil is going to grow. But where sin abounds, grace much more. We've got to be ready for when the war comes. Guess what? There's going to be casualties of that war. You and I have to be ready to meet their needs. But if we have nothing stockpiled, I, I can't tell you how much God impressed that on me last night. You've got to get better. You've got, listen, I, I'm, I'm singing worship songs all the time. I'm worshiping. I sing hymns. I sing old southern gospel songs. I, I was listening to Jason Crabb well, 15 years ago, Jason Crabb. I was listening to him last night sing Through the Fire. And, man, every time I hear that song, it's like the first time I ever heard it. I'm ready to jump up and have church. Amen. But we've got to be doing that because this war is coming, and we've got to be on on the front lines fighting the good fight. We've got to be on the front lines fighting the good fight. Go with me to Romans chapter 6, and I believe, wait, I have verse 13. Is that correct? Romans chapter 6 and verse 13. The Bible says this in Romans 6 and 13. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. We have a choice. We have a choice. Your members, your body, 
your, your mind, your, your emotions, uh, your hands, your feet, all those things, it makes the totality. When it says member, it's the totality of who you are. Do not yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness. Guys, we have a choice. We have a choice. Don't yield your members as unrighteousness, but yield yourselves where? Unto God. Yield yourselves. Surrender yourselves. We, we, it's easy to surrender to the flesh. It's easy. I, I'm telling you, there's nothing easier in life than surrendering to your flesh. There's nothing easier in life to get mad. There's nothing easier in your life to allow anger to overtake you. There's nothing easier in life to get offended. It's easy to get offended. You can get offended every day if you want to. Amen. You can get offended each and every day of your life. Somebody didn't do this right. Somebody didn't do that right. I ordered this. They brought me that. Come on. Man, you can get offended just by the price of everything. Gas is back over $3. My heavens. We can get offended by anything. But we can't. We've got to yield ourselves. We've got to yield ourselves to the right thing. Listen, Carol. If I put a 30-30 in your hand, are you going to know how to use it? No. Why? Just honestly, why? Scared of guns, but you've never been taught, right? You, you don't have the knowledge exactly. If I put a machine gun in your hand, <laughs> she said, that may be a little easier. What's the point? If she's not used it, She's not going to know how to use it when it comes time. If all we know is John 3, 16 and Psalms 23, and the devil comes knocking at your door, you've got to have yielded yourself. Well, when I get to the war, Brother Brian, I'm going to yield myself. No, you're not going to yield yourself. You know why there's boot camps? You know why they send those young men and those young ladies through boot camp? Because they're going to break them down and build them back up. You know why there's a fire academy and a police academy? Because you've got to put some people in things before they ever get to it themselves. Why? Because the more you do it and the more repetitious you are, the easier it is when it comes time for you to do it. I'm in a simunition one time. Simunition means it's the same thing as a bullet, but instead of having a lead head in it, it's got soap in the end of the bullet. And so we're in a simunition training. We're out there. We're, 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 we're doing these, these, these hostage situations and all these things. And, and, and we're going through this old abandoned hotel, and we're trying to clear and do these things. And we've got a sniper, an active shooter. All this stuff's going on. And, and man, your adrenaline's high, and they've got co uh, percussion grenades they're throwing at us in these hallways. And we've got to keep going. And we get done with one of our activities, and uh, one of our, our training sergeants, looks up at me he said chap you okay I said I'm great man I'm great he went back to teaching y'all did a good job did this entered the room right we're going over the video he looks at me and goes hey chap you okay I said yeah Sarge I'm, I'm fine he goes back to teaching and we're teaching and all this stuff and he finally looks at me one third third and final time chap are you okay I said Sarge what in the world's going on he said look at your left arm my left arm had a big old whelp on it, huge whelp. Well, I'd been shot with a bullet. But my adrenaline was so high, I couldn't even feel the whelp. I mean, it's red, it's raised. And he said, guys, that's what I'm talking about. He's shot, and he doesn't even know he's shot. You got to pay attention to your brothers and sisters out there. And if you see blood, you got to take care of it because they'll die in the battlefield and not even know they're wounded. We got to pay attention to our brothers and sisters in this battlefield. We've got to help them out along the way. We got to pray for them, and we've got to love them because you you you'll get wounded, and it'll wound you so deep, and it'll wound you so hard, and you'll bleed to death on that battlefield. And listen, we are not meant to die in this battle. This is not our battle to lose. This is not our battle to die in. But we are the life givers. We are the ones that are going to win every skirmish. We're going to win the war. He's still sitting on the throne of heaven. Jesus is interceding at His right hand and we are his children but we've got to yield ourselves to the right thing 
We've got to yield ourselves. Look at verse 19 of chapter 6. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. Stop right there and look at me. Your flesh is weak. Your flesh does not have strength to fight this battle. Now, it's strong in its desires. It's strong in what it wants to do, but it is weak when it comes to spiritual things. He said, I speak to you because of the infirmity, the feebleness of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanliness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants of righteousness unto holiness. In two scriptures here, God's telling us to yield ourselves. In two scriptures, God is trying to make a point of what we need to do. Yield yourselves to the right thing. Church, I'm telling you, we have to be yielded to the right thing. You have to. My kids have to be yielded to the right thing. That just because they're preacher's kids and pastor's kids doesn't mean they got it all right. I heard this guy walk up to a pastor one time and he said, man, those preacher's kids. He looked at him and he goes, yeah, it's because they hang out with the deacon's kids. My dad's a deacon, so <laughs> they can't get there. They've got to yield themselves. Guys, they're in a different society than I was. I didn't have a little computer in my hand. Hey, Amen. The computer we had was at the school, and it was a big thing. We used stuff called floppy disk. Floppy disk. We had dial-up internet. Amen. DSL. Come on, somebody remembers those days. The picture, little by little, would feed in there. Amen. It's a different world. Everything is, is instant for them. Every, every, everything's instant. Everything is entitled. Everything is now. But if they don't yield themselves to God... They're, they're not going to win this war. There's a war raging for them. They're raging in the classroom. They got teachers that rage against them. They got coaches that rage against them. They've got students that rage against them. We have to stand the test of time. There is a war in my members. But we got to fight it. We have to fight it. Fred, if you're fighting it, call me, brother. If I'm fighting it, I'm going to call you. Why? Because we need to be there for one another. We don't need to become casualties. Well, but, Brother Brian, I, I don't want what I tell you going on Facebook. If I put it on Facebook, I'm not your brother. If I put it on Facebook, I need salvation. I'm not born again. When our brothers and sisters come to us and share with us their spiritual needs, it's not that we need to be a gossiper. We need to be a prayer warrior. Amen. But I speak of the infirmity of your flesh. We're all weak in our flesh. We are all weak in our flesh. Go to Romans 7, verse, I believe, verse 5. From when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin. I thought that was a unique statement. I'd never seen that statement, so I looked it up. The word motions there is literally emotions or influence. Emotions or influence. So when we were in the flesh, the emotions of sin or the influence of sin, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto what? Unto death. Your flesh is trying to kill you. Your flesh is trying to kill you. you I, I'm telling you, it's always about death. It's always about birthing that. So when the emotions of sin, when the influence of sin, were, which were by the law, did work in our members, guess what it's bringing? It's not bringing a shout. It's not bringing a prayer life. It's not bringing anointing. It's bringing death. I, I don't know about you, but I'm not eating something that's rotten. Amen? I'm not eating something that's rotten. That's why I can't eat things with onions. 
Although Sonic onion rings kind of sound good tonight, baby. <laughs> but the emotions of sin, the influence of sin, the law told us what it was, and it didn't work in our members. Well, sin is powerful, guys. It's powerful. And when we deal with just a little bit of it and keep dealing with just a little bit of it, Man, it, it, it gets bad. This dad, his, he was working on his kids about their relationship with Christ. And he said, Dad, we just, it's not big sin. It's just, it's just a little sin. Kids come home one day and they all get in the kitchen and there's brownies on the countertop. They're like, brownies? This is awesome. Who, who made the brownies? And the dad went, I made the brownies. Doctor goes, or daughter, not doctor. Daughter goes, Dad, you know how to make brownies? He goes, Yeah. She goes, Well, what's in your brownies, Dad? He goes, well, you got milk, you got eggs, you got, you got sugar, you got cocoa. He goes, Oh yeah, and there's just a little bit of poop in there. She said, it, w w What did you just say? He said, There's just a little bit of poop in there. She said. I'm not eating those brownies. He said, now, wait a minute. You told me that it was okay to live a life with just a little bit of sin in it. What's wrong with my brownies? Amen. Now, I don't know if he really did that or not, but he told them he did. And here's the reality. They wouldn't deal with it in their brownies, but they're going to deal with it in their life. And that's the war that we're fighting. That's the emotions of sin. That's the influence of sin. That's at work in our members, and it's bringing forth death in our life. Before you point your finger at anybody else, deal with yourself first. Before you say, well, my marriage is bad because of her, I need to deal with me first because I might just find out that my problem with her has been me all along. And when I get me right, then she becomes right. And vice versa, by the way. I'm not just preaching to us, man. That goes for you too, lady. Before you start pointing a finger at him, look at yourself first. Amen. And we need to deal with that. But I notice here this, this amazing statement for when we were in the flesh, the emotions and influences of sin. Well, it's never so more prevalent than when we were growing up in school, was it? Let's do this. Let's, oh, I can't do that. Oh, your mom and dad won't find out. Okay, let's do it. Mom and dad finds out. I'm telling you, my mom had private eyes all over northwest Arkansas. I'd get home, and my mom would go, why were you here tonight? How do you know I'm there? Because mamas know. Last verse I want to share with you tonight, and I'm done. 2 Timothy chapter 2. In verse 4, no man that warreth entangle himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Wow, this got me right here. No man who wars entangles, intertwines, interweaves. No man who entangles the, with the affairs of this life. Look, look. Look right here. Can I tell you why politics and all that is so crazy right now? Can I tell you why? Because the enemy wants you entangled with the affairs of this world. He wants you in fair. That, that's literally what that's talking about, the running of this world, the affairs of this world, the day-to-day -day operations of this world. But he who wars is not going to entangle himself. Listen, that's, that's why. Do you all remember Greg Locke? Anybody remember that name, Greg Locke? You remember how political Greg Locke was for so long? Do you know you never see Greg Locke being per political now? Have you found out why? I'll tell you why, because he got a, got a hold of God and God got a hold of him, and now he's doing a deliverance ministry. 
He's no longer shouting on Fox News, but he's setting people free. His church has gone from about 500 to about 3,000 because he woke up one day and realized, I can't be entangled with the affairs of this world. I have to be entangled in the book. Listen, River, if we want to get a great church that we have to have multiple services, we've got to all of us get in the book. Can't be one of us in the book. Can't be one of us on our knees. It's got to be all of us, and we cannot entangle ourselves with the affairs of this world. Pull this up for me, uh, please, Brother Wade, in the Amplified. No soldier, when in service, gets entangled in the enterprise of civilian life. Man, I love that, Kenneth, don't you? His aim is to satisfy and please the one who enlisted him. Wow. Don't get entangled. Keep fighting, church. Keep fighting. We weren't meant to be political. And I know preachers that will argue that point with me. We weren't meant to be political. Hey, I am thankful for what our governor is doing. I am. She has started off very powerful, very biblical. I'm thankful. If you've not been paying attention, pray for our governor. She's taking a stand. Pray for her. Pray that God, thank God there's somebody godly finally in Little Rock. Amen? Thank God. And I mean truly godly. I'm not talking about somebody who's being elected on Christian principles. I'm talking about somebody who is a born-again child of the Most High God that has walked into that office. Now, we're not going to get entangled with that, but we sure are going to pray for her. We're going to lift her up. But if we're not careful, we'll get so entangled with civilian life that we forget we're a good soldier that's been placed in a fight for the soul of men. You know why we're praying every Tuesday at noon? Right here. Every Tuesday, right here. Praying over these names, believing for these names, begging God to save these. I can't wait to see somebody walk in, look through it, and go, hey, pastor, I got to take this card out. Why? Well, they got born again. We don't have to keep praying over their salvation anymore. But this coming Tuesday, we're going to gather in here at noon, and we're going to fight for these names that are on these cards. We're going to lay them out. We're going to pray over every one of them, just like we did last Tuesday. Why? Because it is time for the church to fight for those who can't fight themselves. They are prisoners of this war. They are prisoners of this war, and we've got to fight for them. Amen? No soldier, when in service, entangles himself again. It's time. It's time to do what we've been called to do. Hey, there's a war. There's a war in your members. There's a war that's brought on by by the law of sin and death. There's a war that when its fruit comes forward, it's going to kill things. It's the fruit of death. It's not the fruit of life. It's not the fruit of the Spirit. How do we win that war, Pastor Brian? you got to stockpile yourself with prayer and worship. How do we win that war? Yield your members as servants of righteousness and true holiness and not yielding our members to sin. Amen? There's a war. We gotta fight it. There's a war raging in the members. But man, we've got to fight it. We've got to win it. Amen. Amen. That's what the Lord had for me to give to you tonight. And I was being obedient. Short, long, whatever. Wasn't pointed, except that this war is winnable. But we have to yield to the right things. We have to yield. Amen. Carol, will you join me, please? We're going to pray over you like we do every Sunday night. Amen. Isn't she cute? Oh, I'm sorry. I got in trouble. You're pretty. Image of God. Amen. You're standing in front of people in church. You better be spiritual. Amen. Guys, we love you. 
We believe in you. We're excited for what God's doing. We're excited for families that he's touching. Amen? Let's keep fighting together. Let's keep warring together. When people hit these altars like we've done the last several weeks, let's get around them and fight for them. Let's believe with them. Father, you already know their week before they know it. You already know what they're facing before it ever arises. I pray, Father, that there will be a strength in them. I pray that there will be an encouragement in them. And I pray that they will yield their members as instruments of righteousness this week. I pray that they would yield their mind to the things of God and not the depressive things of this world. I pray, Father, even though the body may war against them and their health may not be great, that, Father, they would continue to believe that you are their healer. Jesus said to Lazarus' sisters, I am the resurrection and the life. And Lord, they knew their Bible and they knew their teaching. They said, we know in the last days. And Jesus said, no, I'm talking about today. Lord, your word isn't just for tomorrow. It's for right now. Father, may they realize that the word they believe for others is the word that is also prophetically spoken over them. Lord, we are truly serving the greatest of all time who was brought forth the name Jesus to save us from our sins. There's a war in my members. And the only way I'm going to defeat that war and win that war is through the spiritual anointing that Christ purchased through his shed blood on Calvary's hill. God, be with us this week. Be with the exciting things. Be with the things that are going to be hard to do. Be with diagnoses that we were unexpected to us. And, Father, may we be a light this week in a dark world. Father, the reason Carol and I pray together is because the, together we have dominion. That's what the enemy tried to rob from Adam and Eve. Father, tonight you have restored that when you said we are now one flesh when we become husband and wife. So, Father, we pray as one flesh over your children. God, give us a great week. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.